Hello, here's the new Excel inventory template. Now in this video, I'm going to go through the new functionalities, which is the ability to track your income and expenses per bank account. First, we're going to cover the reports section. Clicking on the thumbnail takes us to the reports dashboard. In this section, you notice we've added three new buttons. A button to take us to the account information section. This is where you document new bank accounts. Bank Inflow Summary, this is where you can view your monthly bank deposits. And lastly, we have the Bank Outflow Summary, where you can view your monthly bank payments. These two are reports, while the button on the extreme right is a data entry section where you can add your bank accounts. So first, we cover this section. Now, this works just like other sections of the template. In the upper left, we have the label. To the right, we have a button to delete. Above, we have our navigation pane. And below, we have our table where all bank accounts will be listed. Now, to add a new bank account, since we don't have an Add New button, that means you manually type into the cells. You simply click on the first cell below bank name, you double click, and then you go ahead and type the name of the bank. Once you're done, to move to the next field, you make use of the Tab key on your keyboard, takes you to the Account Number field, and then you go ahead and supply the bank account number. Next, if you have an account officer, you can go ahead and supply the account officer's name, and any contact information, which can be the phone number or an email address. Now you notice I've supplied values to the first four fields. Next, we have a formula generated field. Now the bank ID is automatically generated by Excel using the first column, which is the bank name, and the second column, which is the account number. So it joins the two together to generate a unique bank ID. Now, in other sections, such as the sales section and the expense section, it's this bank ID you're going to use to identify every bank account. Now, the reason for the bank ID is that it's possible you can have multiple accounts in the same bank. So that way, this is going to be unique because it's made up of the bank name and the account number. Lastly, we enter the starting balance. So this is the balance in your account as at today. So the template is going to use this when calculating the current balance. So let's assume that as at today, we have 55,000 in this bank account. You notice once I enter 55, the template automatically tells me that my current balance is 55. So the current balance is a dynamic field. The values here will increase as you make sales to this particular account, and it's going to reduce as you make expenses with this particular account. So this is going to be the, the current point in time balance, increase and decrease as you make transactions. So we've added our first account. I'm going to go ahead and add the second. Clicking directly below my last entry, I'm going to enter the bank name. Making use of my tab key, I'm going to enter the bank account number, the account officer name, and lastly, the contact information. You notice the bank ID is automatically generated, joining the bank name and the account number. The starting balance, let's assume I have 100,000. And you notice my current balance and starting is going to be the same because we haven't entered any transaction. So we've covered the bank account section. This is where you list all your bank accounts. If you have 20 accounts, you repeat the process 20 times. To delete, you simply click on the bank name, click on delete, you get a confirmation message. If you do, you want to click yes. If you don't, you want to click no. So we go back to the reports section. Recall I said we have two reports. Now, before we generate the reports, I'm just going to go ahead and add products add restock, and then add sales. I go to the product section. You notice that I've already added two products so as to shorten the length of the video. To add products, it's just like the other video. You click on add new, enter the product name and an optional description, and then click on enter. The other columns are automatically generated by the template. So I've added product one and two, generic names. Next, I go to my expense section to enter my starting quantities. So I click on product restock because I'm restocking my products. I'm going to back date, so I'm going to make this the first day of January. This is going to be a paid transaction. And next, I have to indicate the bank name. So this is a new field that we've just added. So for every transaction that's paid, you need to indicate the bank in which you're paying from. So let's assume we're paying from our GT bank account. Next, we indicate the product that we're buying. Let me make that product one. Let's assume it costs 100 Naira. We're buying 10, and we're selling it for 150 each. I'm going to leave the supplier field blank. So once I click enter, what I'm telling the template is that 1,000 Naira has been spent from this bank account for the purchase of this product. So once I click enter, it tells us that it has been added, so expense added, and we should see it listed on the first row. So these are the values that I supplied. 
And now if we go back to our bank account section, so if I click on reports, click on account information, you notice that our current balance has reduced by 1000. So we started with 55, we spent 1000 to buy additional products. So we have a balance of 54. So this will reflect your current balance based on data you enter in the sales and expense section. In the same way, if you go to the product section, we should see that our first product. So you notice that for the first row, that's product one, the balance is now 10. So the template has automatically recognized the restock that we just added. In the same way, the three columns to the right, as the purchase date, cost price, and selling price, have equally been automatically updated. So I'm going to demonstrate that again, or repeat the process, entering my starting quantities for product two. So in the expense section, I'm going to click product restock. Going to backdate to 2018 December, that's the 16th of December. It's going to be paid. I'm going to make use of my second bank account, which is the first bank. I'm going to select the second product. Let's assume this goes for 200 and I purchased 20. I'm selling it for 300 each. I'm leaving the supplier blank and clicking on enter. So it tells me expense added. We should now see two rows the first for product one, the second for product two. So now we should have 20 units in our product section. So going back to the products, you notice that the balance has increased to 20 with the respective time and date. And similarly, if we go to our account, we should see that our balance has reduced by 4,000. So going to account information, you notice that we started with 100. We spent four, so we have a balance of 96. So that's how the current balance column works. Now going back to the expenses, this works not only for direct expenses, that's product restock, also for indirect expenses like your rent, utility, transportation, and so on. So if you click on the add purchase button, so if I click on the add purchase, now this is used to add indirect expenses, things like advertising, office, rent, and so on. Now here, you notice that we've equally added the field to link every transaction with a bank. Now, functionalities have also been added here such that if you indicate that this is a credit transaction, you can't add a bank account because if it's credit, it means you're not paying. So let me just use this quick example, select my GT bank, supplier one. Once I click enter, it's going to refuse to accept it, telling you all credit expenses shouldn't have a bank selected. Now you have two options here. You can either change this to paid or you can delete this bank account. So once you delete, you press your ESC key to clear the values that you entered in the cell. So there's an escape key in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Once you press it, it's going to clear the content. Now I can be able to enter it. Or alternatively, I can change it to pay transaction. So now I've indicated that this is a credit transaction. So I haven't paid for this. So that means that if I go back to my bank account, it shouldn't reflect this. It should reflect only the 1000 here. So going to reports account, you notice the balance is still 54 because that's a credit transaction. Now, whenever I make payments, so let's assume that today I have the money to pay and I click on add payments and I select the supplier, it tells me 10,000 balance. So now if I indicate the 10,000 now and I indicate the bank, which is GT bank. So notice that in the payments section, we've equally included bank. So whenever you're paying, you can indicate the bank you're paying from. Once you click enter, it's going to store that transaction. And we should now have the fourth transaction. So going back to the bank account, we should see that our balance is reduced by 10 plus one, which is 11. So going to my reports, account information, you notice it's now 44. So 55 minus 11 gives us 44. So that covers the expense section. So you can enter your product restocks, your payments, and your purchases indicating the bank account. So if I scroll to the right, you notice we have the bank column here. So for each transaction, you can indicate the bank. Now going to the sales section, it works exactly the same way. The only difference is that the sales is going to increase your bank balance, whereas the expenses reduces your bank balance. So all I do here is I click on new sales. I'm going to type a customer randomly because I haven't added any customer. This is going to be paid. Let's assume there's a delivery of 1000 and the person is buying three units of my first product. So that's 450. Now at the bottom, you notice we have a bank name field. So if I try to click enter, the template tells me that all pay, paid sales should have a bank. So you must indicate the bank whenever it's a paid transaction. So here I go ahead and indicate GT Bank. Once I click enter, my GT Bank balance should have increased by 450. So you notice it has been added to the first row. So if I go to my reports, go to my accounts, it should have increased by 1,450.
because 1,000 for delivery and 450. So notice we have 45,450 from 44. Okay, so that's automatically increased my balance. So that's how it works whenever you add payments. And if you're adding a credit transaction, your account balance is not going to increase. It works the same way because credit means the customer hasn't paid you yet. So if the customer hasn't paid you, that means you haven't yet gotten any money. So if I click on enter, I can store because I left the bank field blank. But you notice my balance is not going to increase because I am not allowed to select a bank with this transaction. Okay, so that sums up how the template works. And the same way, add payments, you notice there's a bank field here. So you can indicate the bank whenever you're paying your customers. So that's a summary of the new functionalities. Now we can go to the report section and view our inflow and outflow report. So the first gives you a summary of all payments. So here you can be able to select a particular bank and it's going to list all transactions in that bank within the months that you specify. So at the top, you notice we have the ability to indicate the year and the months we want to see. And here, all you need to do is to click on a particular bank, so GT Bank, and it's going to show only transactions that took place in GT Bank, which is only this product. If I click on, that's the only bank we've made sales on. If you have additional banks, it's going to be listed here. So once you click on the bank, it's going to list transactions related to that bank. In the same way, if I quickly go back to my sales, and I'm just going to quickly add a sales for my first bank. So I'm just going to do this very fast. And I'm going to make this product 2, 10, and this is going to be my first bank. So once I click on enter, it's going to store that transaction. So if I go back to my reports, bank inflow, we should now see. There we go. So you notice we now have First Bank and GT Bank. So if I click on First Bank, it's going to show me transactions for First Bank, which is what I just added. 3,000 delivery, 3,000 paid. If I click on GT Bank, it's going to show me the transaction for the GT Bank, which is 1,450. Okay? So here you can be able to see the inflow for a particular bank account. And if you want to see for all your banks, you simply click on the funnel in the upper right, and it's going to display transactions for both GT Bank and First Bank. In the same way, if we go back to our report and we go to our outflow summary, it does exactly the same, but for the expense section. So you notice the same thing. We have the two here. And to filter, you make use of the triangle button to the right of the bank name. So if I want to see only transactions to GT, I simply click on this arrow here. And here, I only select GT Bank, and it's going to show me only GT Bank. In the same way, if I want to see only First Bank, I click on the arrow here, and then I select First Bank, click on OK, and it's going to show me only First Bank transactions. So that way you can be able to see your summary across a particular bank. And if you want to see all, you simply click on Select All, and it's going to show you all your banks listed together. So that's a summary of the new functionality. Thanks, and do take care.